it's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love Podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? A life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. I got to tell you this story about Facebook Marketplace. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus. I know. Scott, do you like Facebook Marketplace? (laughs) Do you use Facebook Marketplace? No, but my wife does. And we were having a conversation about it yesterday. Oh, Oh, what? Because she asked you to go pick something up because she was afraid for her life or? No. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was the one that that said that she shouldn't go by herself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. She's like, why? I'm like, because you don't know what the hell. I mean, what are you selling? I think it depends on buying or selling what you're buying or selling. Mm. We're buying. Okay. So if you're, I mean, it depends on what you were buying. Wow. Really? I I mean. Interesting. A cooler? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're safe? Those people are fine. Those people are fine. You know what it is? They're they're like, I'm sick and tired of my kids and fucking sports. Okay. Buy this cooler. Okay. (laughs) That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. It's just Mm -hmm. discrimination by item. Yes. Yes. It's fine. That's what it is. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm a big Facebook Marketplace person. I love Facebook Marketplace. I do a lot of Facebook marketplacing. I do Facebook marketplacing for other people who have things that they want to sell. I just really enjoy the experience. And I'm very apparently unique in that regard because many people just hate it. They just hate it. They don't want to go back and forth. They don't want to answer the questions. They don't want to whatever. Well, I have a really great track record of not getting stood up by people. I've never, knock on wood, been stiffed by someone. Usually people don't aren't rude to me, right? So I just have a a decent, decent track record. So I'm looking for some items for a friend, some baby items for a friend. Mm -hmm. And um, she had asked me to look for, I think it was, one of the items was a car seat. Mm -hmm. Now I have not looked for a car seat in a really long time, right? So I had to go back and remind myself from the manufacturer's date to the date of expiration, it's really only seven years, mm-hmm. right? So if you're not going to get a car seat, if you're going to get a convertible car seat that goes from infant all the way up to six years old, but you only have two years left on your you know, warranty, if you will, that's not going to work. So there's just some math involved, right? Of what I'm trying to figure out. So um, I get this situation set up This person's going to go meet the other person out at Longhorn Steakhouse or something like that, wherever this person eats. It's this huge ordeal that they have to do this. You know, they've had to share phone numbers and they'd have to connect with each other and make sure they were going to meet at a certain time. And, oh, well, I'm coming in from out of town. And so I'm not going to, it's like a huge ordeal. And the person that I'm helping find the item is like, are you sure that this person's going to be there and everything's going to be great? And I'm like, yes, there's no reason this person would be there. It'll be completely fine. Well, true to form, this person at the last minute says, oh, sorry, I forgot to bring the car seat. So um, (laughs) sorry you drove an hour to come pick up the car seat and you were here for a event and um, this person happened to be in town for an event. They had driven an hour for this event and we're going to pick up the car seat. Oh, so they didn't come in just to pick up. No, oh, thank not God. just for it. Right. Okay. But, and then was like, sorry, I just don't have it. Right. And so this person's like, okay, so I think we're one for one on how these situations happen. I said, I'm sorry. I think it's your energy. Mm-hmm. I think it must be you. This never happens to me. Right. I'm really sorry that this had happened. So then I'm like, I okay, well, I, <laughs> it's not my negotiation. That's for sure. Because mm-hmm. I'm real good at that. Mm-hmm. So then it gets to me trying to find a car seat and another car seat. And I go and I find this car seat that seems to be a good option. It's $35, which is a reasonable price. But again, it only has two years left on its expiration date. And I need it to last a good five years. So 
I ask for the expiration date and the person says, tells me the date. And then I put a pin in it for a minute and I go to my friend and say, hey, just wanted to check in. This is the situation that we're having. My gut sense is that we don't take this because of whatever reasons. Well, it takes her a decent amount of time to get back to me because I don't know, it was six in the morning when I found it, right? But maybe it was nine, nine thirty. Mm-hmm. I get a little message in my my inbox. And it's this woman who writes, Thanks for getting back to me, period, and then leaves the conversation. <laughs> and I am pissed. Mm. So I try to write her back doesn't go through because she's left the conversation and then Mm. I had all these feelings about it and I'm like what what environment do we live in right now when you tell someone someone says what's the expiration date the person gives you the expiration date you don't answer right away because you're going to check with someone else to find out and then three hours later this person sarcastically, passive, aggressive, aggressively, and negatively writes, thanks for getting back to me. And then not only that, mm. but decides that they get to leave the conversation after that point. Mm-hmm. And that part for me is the most angering because you didn't even give me an opportunity to say, I, I understand it took yeah. a little bit longer to get back to you, but it's because I'm checking for a friend. Mm-hmm. And I thought in that situation, You've missed out because you're now angry that you think people are terrible that they haven't gotten back. So you don't know the true story. So you're miserable. Mm -hmm. You've shut down my ability to be able to further comment on this situation, which is really unfair Mm because what your elitist bitch, I don't care. Like, Mm -hmm. what the hell? You think that your opinion on what just happened is the only thing that matters? Mm -hmm. You're looking for a quicker than three hour turnaround time, Mm -hmm. right? So I start to have all of these feelings and I've gone so far as to be like, I'm going to search her out on Facebook and I'm going to send her a message because I need to let her know that it's inappropriate (laughs) that she takes it upon herself. And and I would say things like etiquette police, (laughs) you are removing yourself from an ability to know the true story of what happened. And you're going around nasty mad the rest of the day because you think that someone intentionally, inadvertently, or not even inadvertently, intentionally decided not to get back to you. So, of course, I can't stop thinking about this particular situation. And then, (laughs) again, I still get back on the horse, right? I get back on Facebook Marketplace and I end up meeting up with this woman and a different woman different woman yeah yeah, yeah. okay oh i was gonna say yeah oh, we're not we're no. not yeah oh, she wishes. Not, not only did she, she wish she wish i found her damn address right, showed up right. at her front door right. no no different With a woman. baseball bat different woman <laughs> completely different yeah right right <laughs> like i can't I me can't. hitting the baseball bat in my hand when i get there i can't no so i found this other woman and I go to her house and her husband answers the door because they're of elderly age. They're definitely, you know, in their early 70s. Or late, and they're selling late, a car seat. 60s. No, th- this was for a different, this was for a ride on fire truck. Also for the same, same situation. <sighs> okay. And her husband answers the door. And you can tell the reason the husband's answering the door is to make sure that I'm not a, a creepy ass mother effer. Mm. Okay. And so then looks the, can be deceiving. The, woman, the woman's behind him with this little fire truck. And then she comes out and she's like, hi, it's so nice to meet you. 25 minutes later, I have now sat on this woman's porch in the rocking chair. She's offered me a glass of iced tea. Did I want it? Yeah, I didn't take it. We're talking about the fire truck. We're talking about her lawn. We're talking about her, <laughs> her, her, um, her daughter who had the kid who had the fire truck. We're talking about Mother's Day. We're talking about where to get the best hanging baskets. We, 25 minutes, have this beautiful conversation. And afterwards, she sends me a message because she had called the hanging basket place. And she had asked them what their prices were because I had asked how much for a hanging basket. She's like, I want to let you know I called whatever the place was. Here's the information they provided me over the phone. Gave me a full-on price list. Said it was so nice to meet you. You have a beautiful soul. So glad the fire truck went to you. And I carried on about my day. You didn't go and buy the plant because you felt obligated since you did yeah, all the later work? that day, I, I did. I can't. I can't. Later that day, I did. But here we are 
with the most diverse experiences on Facebook Marketplace. And my question is, what's the difference between person A who just completely forgets and doesn't show up and doesn't like you're so discombobulated after multiple layers of fine tuning to make sure that this happens you completely forget the the thing even though you know the person's going to be coming in an hour Mm -hmm. right and isn't going to be able to pick it up otherwise then you have person b who's just a nasty passive aggressive rude person Mm -hmm. and then you have person c Mm -hmm. who offers you the prices for the hanging plants because she made a phone call specific because you were curious about it what's what's the difference between all of those people age Age? Age? Yeah, when you're in your 70s, you have time to (laughs) chit-chat. All right. Well, that's that's it. So thank you. (laughs) That was the answer right there. There you go. Done. That's good. (laughs) (laughs) Scott, you have anything maybe you want to add to that? Sorry. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) No, for real. They have time. It's got to be more than age. Well, so I'm th- sure it's a component of it's a lot of things. Like what? Some people are assholes. Why? I don't, because they are. Because they Upbring, were born upbringing. Because right. they were raised by then, assholes. Then don't be on Facebook Marketplace oh, yeah, selling exactly, a car seat. Exactly. And okay. Then, I'm then fine. But they're you. not. But wait, you have to again. Ten, intention. They're just selling a car seat. If they want to sell the car seat, now granted, could they have handled it differently? Sure. But they don't care. They're not trying to be friends with you. Like. They don't have to be friends what with they me, should but have they said have is, to be friendly. Well, they don't have to be. They should have said, hello. No, right, they should why? say, are hey, there? are you still interested? Yeah. Because I got somebody else on the line. I'm going right. to give you 15 more minutes to respond to me. Like, put some boundaries up there. Not just, sure. Or you don't even have to say that. If I don't get back to you, I don't get back to you. And then you place, place the sold button on it. Right. Right? So, but then would you that, be pissed that they put no. the sold? How is that different? No, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not pissed about that at all. That's, that is the expected response that happens on Facebook Marketplace. So it's, hi, I'm interested because it's a button that you can push. Mm -hmm. And then the person, or or they'll say, is this still available? Mm -hmm. And then I write the answer, yes. Mm -hmm. The number of times I've written the word yes and no one has ever gotten back to me because I don't care. I'm going to tend to whoever the person is that says, when would I be able to pick this item up? So you're having a reaction to the fact that she took five seconds out to say, thanks for getting back to me. Yes. Interesting. In, in, in a passive aggressive, but intentionally did, what she's communicating is, you bitch, you asked me a question and you didn't get back to me. You're rude. So but, she's basically saying, I can't handle that. That's rude. And then and then leaves the conversation, then literally removes herself from the conversation, which means I can't write back because she's escaped. She's she's physically removed herself from the conversation. Did she ask you a question? No, I asked her a question. Can you please tell me when the. So um, why is she pissed that you didn't get back to her? Because she she was assuming she was assuming because Aaron was inquiring about the expiration date that she was interested and when she re- when she responded with the expiration date, Aaron went radio silence. So in her mind, she's like, Aaron should have said, "Oh, okay, let me think about it," or "Let me yeah, let okay, me ask thanks. my friend." I'll, I'll be in touch. Uh, correct. She's assuming that's probably what you should have done. Well, that's what I would have done, but but either way, within so- what amount of time? Immediately, as soon as she sent it, I would have been like, "Okay, great. I'm going to check with my friend to see if she wants it." Yeah. Can you hold it for me? Or I would have like. Now, if I take that a step further, I think I already had made up my mind at that point that it wasn't going to be it because I'm not going to buy a convertible car seat from infant to five that's only going to last me for two years. Sure. Right? Sure. So I think in my mind, I had already made the decision this isn't a worthwhile investment, but I wanted to double check anyway because it's not for me. But why didn't you say that to that person? So at 6.30 in the morning, I say, how long is the, what, what's the expiration date? At 7.15 in the morning, she says 2021, right? Or whatever. Um, and then at 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm texting this other person to say, hey, this is my thought on this. What do you think? Okay, so those are, in my mind, this all happened within, like, you guys were both in the chat. 
at the same time, which no. is why it made sense that she got pissed. Oh, no. And, and you would never know if I was in the chat. The only thing you know is that when I respond, my face bubble moves down to look like I have responded. Right. But again, this was over the course of maybe three hours. So yeah. I write to this person at eight o'clock and say, this is my thought on this. What do you think? Well, that person doesn't get back to me for an hour and a half because yeah, it's I'm eight busy. o'clock in the morning. Right? When and they got a life. So yeah. I find out at 930. So mm-hmm. from six, whatever, when I asked the question to 930 is the only amount of time that's happened. Mm-hmm. I then go back in to say, hey, I just wanted to, right? But, but she's already and pulled she's already, already pulled said, up. "Thanks for getting back to me," mm-hmm. or "Thanks for whatever," and then removed herself from the conversation. So the part that's annoying to me, she doesn't know me, right? <laughs> I'm as detail oriented as they come. Sure, I'm absolutely going to get back to you. I'm not going to, right? So I think the part that was frustrating for me is you don't know me Mm -hmm. you're taking out whatever negativity you have on other people on facebook marketplace or it was the hype of she thought she was going to get a sale and i don't passive aggressiveness gets my goat every single time because i'm not a passive aggressive communicator Mm -hmm. i borderline on aggressive communication (laughs) Right. I am going to aggressively, which is what I was going to respond back Mm -hmm. had she not removed herself. So I I actually would prefer that the first situation happened where the woman's like, I'm sorry, I completely forgot Then I gave her a two rating and said, if you're going to make plans with someone, you need to follow through on those plans, especially when those plans involve someone coming in from out of town to get this product and phone numbers have been shared, locations have been shared. So you need to write yourself a note. You need to do whatever you need to make it happen, whatever. Okay. Human error. You had to get to Longhorn Steakhouse, whatever. (laughs) This second one is what pissed me off. And I just can't get past the audacity of people. And then the fact that she left, I'm like so offended that you left the conversation. What I want to be like is bitch. Mm. What are you a bitch? I mean, maybe I don't mean bitch like rude. I mean, like a little bitch, like mm. you, you can't handle the conversation. You got to you got to see something rude and then run away like that. Again, no empathy for that. I get so angry about that kind of stuff. My guess is she had a lot of inquiries and she needed to remove you from the conversation because she couldn't manage it all in her app. Possible is my guess. I've had a lot of inquiries before and I just don't respond to any of them. I wait for the person to write back to me. I've had people say to me, could you please provide me measurements Mm -hmm. and never respond to me? Mm -hmm. Measurements involve me having to go downstairs, get my measuring tape, do whatever, right? That's a part of selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. I agree. Yep. I agree. It's almost like this rift in cultural communications Mm -hmm. or cultural expectations. Mm -hmm. There is an expectation when you're on Facebook Marketplace that this is what you're going to get. And Mm -hmm. then I usually have the type of interactions that happen in the C scenario where the Mm -hmm. woman is just sending me, you know, hanging basket prices, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But it was this part that I just was having this massive reaction to you're making yourself angry about something you didn't need to make yourself angry about. So in that regard, I feel bad for you. Mm. You're also removing me from the conversation without allowing me to speak and you don't get that that's power. the bigger point i mean i think i think that that is where people tend to is it pull over, the power react or underreact but i think that they don't allow genuine conversation to happen so that closure Closure can happen and assumptions can be erased. Right. I think that that's the biggest problem. Right. Um, And it's a power play. And I don't believe that power plays. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was truly. I'm just I mean, she didn't have to say what she had to say, but maybe it's truly just deleting and getting out of your inbox. But she should have just deleted it. And then if you wanted more, she you would have come back in. If it wasn't a power play, she would not have previously uh, said, thanks, thanks for, for getting not, back to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The, it's no, the I know. typical keyboard commando thing where they yes. where they say something nasty yeah. and then block you. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> they don't what want, is they, that? But then they that, know that they're being a pussy and they right. don't want you to get. But then know, that makes me think I don't that? want her negative juju in my baby's car seat anyway. Ooh, absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. Like, that wasn't going to happen anyway. But what is that? What is that about people? 
Is it that you don't have confidence in your ability to manage conflict? Is it, I mean, this is cyberbullying, right? So it's so much easier to be the keyboard warrior that's just saying a whole bunch of stuff. But we know from research that the minute that you put a kid in front of another kid, Mm -hmm. he is not going to say anything close to what it was that he typed. Right. Right. But have you ever seen like those shows where the person has typed something and has to say it out loud to the person's face in front of them? There's no way. There's no way. But like, you know what I find? Who so, do you think you are? But it's not just that. It's also vulnerability. It's funny you say that because I was listening to a couple of other people tell me that they texted their significant others their feelings. And I'm like, who the fuck does that? Oh, what do you mean you texted? And oh. then they were angry when that person didn't respond. I'm mm. like, what kind of feelings like? All the things. I'm feeling hurt about what you said, or like, I'm scared the lightning is close by. Oh, no. Like, potentially end of relationship shit. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, texting? No. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, who the fuck does that? Oh, I'm a big fan of that strategy. Absolutely not. It's it's kind of like, have you seen, um, I think the show is Love is Blind, and they go in those rooms, and they share feelings with each other and thoughts but they don't get to see each other yeah well one of the episodes the couple got in an argument and the girl said can i make a recommendation can you go into this room and i go into this like they're back in the pods like we're back in the pods and they had this beautiful conversation Mm -hmm. that anytime that healthy communication can happen in my mind regardless of whether that's face to face or over writing a letter or over text message or whatever. Yes. It's knowing who you are in a relationship with to know, you know, for Mark and I, face to face isn't always ideal. Mm -hmm. He gets a little tripped up because I'm coming at him so quick Mm -hmm. and I get a little over visually stimulated. And so I am like noticing every single thing that's happening. So sometimes we do our best communication by text. But you've established that. Right. There has to be an established, when I come to you with deep, heavy shit in texts, I expect, or we've we've decided that this is how it's going to be handled. Feelings get hurt Mm. when one person assumes, well, since I'm putting it in a text, it's because I'm super vulnerable and you should know that. Yeah. Right. And then you don't get what you want back because maybe that person's incapable of writing or it could be a thousand things. Right. But what I'm trying to say, it's, it's gotta be mutually. Yes. Um, determined that this is what it's going to be because there's some people you're right that can't handle the face-to-face because they're uncomfortable and they don't want to say the wrong thing or they don't you know whatever but you just want it to have been pre-discussed it has to be this is what we do because because when you do when we've pre-discussed it and we agree to it and then you still blow me off that's how i know you don't care right right yeah so when the keyboard warrior is saying whatever they want to say behind that I do think that that's inappropriate because you got to be able to say what you got to be able to say. Mm. You should you should be able to say all the things you're thinking and feeling. Like don't talk behind someone's back. If you're going to say it behind your back, you got to be able to say it to their face regardless of how that person wants to hear it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, interesting. And so I do think and that's so important. And so that woman and I on Facebook Marketplace have never had a pre-arranged discussion about, right? And, and there's so not I'm etiquette, sort I guess. of assuming right. that there's Facebook Marketplace etiquette. But, I would assume too. Yeah. And, but, and just you so are all very clear, experienced. I'm very clear that there's Facebook but Market know, etiquette and this is the way it's supposed to happen. And, and you're very experienced. It, right? Yeah. So then again, here mm-hmm. comes this part of me that's like, that ain't it. That's mm-hmm. not how we're supposed to do it. And by the way, that's really bad communication, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that could be a part of it, but this is where the conversation goes awry. And I'll tell you, in my 40s, one of the biggest lessons I've taken away is that once you know yourself and you know your partner or you know your best friend or you know whoever it is that you're trying to engage with, you get in the, I've gotten in the down and dirty about conversations about who we really are and how we need to function more so, whereas in my 30s, it was just sort of assumed that you're going to get on this page and he's going to get on this page and this is what's going to happen, right? Good point. It's a really it's good point. It's been much more of a talking point and one of the tra- changing or um, turning points for us was when we went on vacation mm-hmm. to Ocean City, Maryland mm-hmm. and getting in the car and saying, we are not a family that's going on vacation together again and this is why, mm-hmm. right? Because I felt like this, Mark felt like this, Carter felt like this, right? It just didn't work. Mm-hmm. But instead of having just 
judgment on that and being like, oh, well, your family can't vacation together or oh you guys sleep in separate bedrooms is one that I hear a lot right or oh you guys right it doesn't matter anyone who has opinions on anyone else's relationship Mm -hmm. what occurs to me is the healthiest thing that could possibly happen is when you're with that person and you're outwardly just saying if you have something that's really important for you to communicate could you send it to me in a text message so I could have a little more time to process it and then I promise you that I will respond to you Mm -hmm. and if I can't respond to you right away in a way that's heartfelt I'm going to say I care about you I've read what you've written and I will get back to you I'm just in the middle of you know doing pavement right now or or whatever. whatever the case may be right but what you're talking about is establishing the expectations of who we are and how we're going to communicate with one another. And in my 40s, I found that that's just a much more normal, anticipated way of how we engage. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why it took this long to to get to that place. Because I don't think that's a normal thing that people do. I was just thinking about, I was just, when as you're saying that, I'm like, I think it's really important that we're teaching our kids that too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, mom, I can't hear you or understand you when you're talking to me. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you, you know what I mean? Like just understanding, understanding that and then reinforcing that and talking about it so that it becomes natural so that they're they're able to communicate to their partners, to their friends, to their homes ever and say, this is what I need. Mm-hmm. This is what makes me feel the most adequate to be able to communicate back to you mm. or whatever whatever yeah. it may be oh, i think yeah. that that's i don't God, think that we've we all... never been taught that no we had to figure that out on our own through a whole bunch of trial and error that is 100 percent something that maybe should be figured out before you walk down the aisle to someone 100 percent agree but how many people do they don't they don't unless you're lucky enough to go through some it, but again we're like nerds right like we like personality tests and we like those kinds yeah. of things and we like comparing and contrasting and like being We've always liked that. Right. So I remember some of my first experiences in in college, learning those personality things and thinking, oh my gosh, this makes so much more sense now. I understand why I am the way that I am. I don't necessarily think kids in high school as they're doing that, because it's funny, I'm, I'm Taylor tells me all the things that she's doing in school and I'm like, wow, if I had done that, mm-hmm. truth is I did do that. Yeah, I just didn't care. Uh, Yeah. Or for me, it didn't translate into this is going to be something that's beneficial in your career someday because I'm like, okay, this is an assignment for school. Exactly. Where with my daughter, because she knows that you and I are both weird. She'll come and be like, mom, look at that. Remember remember when she showed me her her Myers-Briggs and I'm like, that's not you. Yep. And she goes, what do you mean? And I go, you didn't take that test right. (laughs) Right? She goes, why? And she's trying to write a paper. And I go, you're not, you can't write that paper because it's not you. Right. And so then I made her retake it and I, I coaxed her through it. I'm like, answer this question. She's like, well, I don't know what that means. I go, that's why you answered it wrong. Right. I go, let me tell you what this means. And then she started and then she got the spit out and she, her. Oh yeah. The light bulb went on. Yeah. And she goes, oh my God, mom. She went right into her room and dove into that paper. Sure. And I'm thinking to myself, my God, that's the key right, right there. And right. then then now she has conversations with it. She's like, mom, we did the love languages test the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And then right. she, now she understands why Sawyer's a stage five clinger. Yeah. And she looks at me and she's like, mom, I get it. Yep. And she's that jealousy or whatever went yep. away because she's like, that's what Sawyer needs to feel loved. Yep. Yes. Yes. For me, it related to what you're talking about, I think when it comes to Mark, there's been a tremendous amount of judgment he's placed on himself sure. about who he is or how he's supposed to be or right. So he even as a man, a husband, a father, all that. Yeah, he re- he knows himself really, really well. Mm-hmm. It's just been that next level of judgment associated with, well, is it OK for me to be like this? Yeah. And for me being a massive empath, mm-hmm. it took me longer to get to the point where it was okay to me for me to have thoughts and feelings that were my own, mm-hmm. even if that meant that it might be a distancer yeah. between myself and other people. Yeah. So here we are going into our 40s where he's trying to unpack the, well, this is who I really am and it's okay for these things to be true. Mm-hmm. Like I need more time because I'm a bit more of an introvert than I ever thought, but mm-hmm. I don't want to come off as rude, right? And he's able to now do that in an environment where I'm like, if you need to take that space, you need to take that space. You're going to be an overall healthier human being mm-hmm. if you're taking that. Well, that hasn't been allowed before, right? right? It would be more like, how come you're not joining the family? Mm-hmm. How come you're not doing this, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for me to be in a place where, I mean, we joke about the social media stuff that's been going on. But the reality is the social media stuff is about me stating my opinion that I have about something for really 
very clearly one of the first times in my life. And it's been a really difficult journey for me Mm -hmm. because I'm fearful that someone's feelings are going to get hurt in the process. Mm -hmm. I'm fearful that when I take a stance on something, and as a therapist, you don't take a stance on things, right? You're supposed to be vanilla. You're a blank slate. People are supposed to put all of their their own thoughts and feelings on you. Mm -hmm. But if I all of a sudden come out and say, I have a really strong feeling about this, Mm -hmm. then other people who don't feel that way might be less connected with me. And then we've missed an opportunity for change to occur or for whatever, right? Yep. And so yep. just, again, something about this happened as soon as we got into our 40s. And then now mm-hmm. I'm turning that around and trying to help Carter understand yes. who are you as a, as as a, a young and, person yes. who yes. is in their formative years and they're yes. experiencing things and they're feeling things and they're like this, they're that. And then not making them feel bad about it. Yes. Right. He needs a tremendous amount of downtime. Yes. He is not a kid that you can bring to a birthday party and then have him go do this and mm-hmm. then have him go do that. Right. Mm-hmm. So I will say things to him like, let's take a look at our overall weekend, Mm -hmm. knowing that you like to have time to come home and just be by yourself or go do what, play your Beyblades or whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Does this feel like a lot, you Mm -hmm. know? And he's now able to say, I don't think we can do all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Or I know that basketball is going to take a lot out of me, but Mm -hmm. I don't think I can do, right? And sometimes he'll overdo it. And then he'll notice at the birthday party Hey, mom, could you come pick me up? Mm -hmm. Because he's got to come home because he's all done. Mm -hmm. The other day after a tournament, they were all going to play knockout. And Mm -hmm. he's like, no, I'm ready to go home. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just want to check in with you. I'm hearing you say that you don't want to play knockout with the kids. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to not do that experience so that we can head home. He said, yep, I feel like I've done enough today. But that's so we got in and we went home. But that is so beautiful. And then you not giving him crap about it because of whatever. And then him feeling guilty. And then he goes and does it. And then he's overstimulated and he punches someone. Now he's in trouble. Right. It's it's all of that. Right. Listen to your body. Understand. Right. But he needs to know. He needs to know before he gets in a marriage or has children. Yes. If you want to have children someday, you need to be prepared for what that is because that's going to throw you on your head. Yep. You're a kid, you're going to be a man who needs a tremendous amount of downtime, who does not like a whole lot of stimulation, Mm -hmm. like overstimulation. Mm -hmm. Someone who gets very overwhelmed Mm -hmm. when X, Y, Z is happening. Do you want to know what it is to throw a kid in that mix? Mm -hmm. All of those things. Right. So I'm not saying don't have kids, but I am saying before you get to that point, you either need to have worked on some of these things or you need to have come to terms with the fact that this is going to look different when and, you throw a kiddo in the mix. And you need to be able to communicate with your partner because yes. then your partner is resentful of you because right. now you've disappeared because right. your priorities are right. more important. Right. Because it gets interpreted yes. as, oh, I'm sorry. So you need more downtime. Good for you. Right. Well, so I'm the one who actually can push through it a little mm-hmm. bit more. Therefore, it's now on me. Right. Right. 100%. But again, those are the conversations that need to be had. The, none of that was in my mind. Before That's I got not- married, it wasn't even anything that could would have occurred to me. I knew who I was at a general sense of right. the word, but I didn't know who I was going to be as a mom. I didn't you know don't. who I was going to be as a business owner. You don't. I didn't know right any of these things. Nope. But the core of who I am and these sort of baseline things mm-hmm. are consistent. Mm-hmm. When I finally reset and realized I can only do this much in a day in order to make sure that my body and my mind are in homeostasis, mm-hmm. that number was probably four times less than mm-hmm. what I was doing. Oh, yeah. But it took a massive upheaval in life Mm -hmm. in order to figure that out Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. wouldn't it have been incredible had i known that about myself before i went into all of these different things sure you know sure Mm -hmm. it's really really interesting yeah all right hit us with oh you're gonna hit us with some hippie boo but i picked it well this is fascinating it is the seven the chariot movement see this this little merman with his it's a chariot. merman. Oh, we never had that one. With two. Oh, he cute. The a chari- yellow the and chariot? a purple seahorse that are pulling him in his seashell. You know what it rhyme- reminds me of? Movement. When King Triton comes in in the beginning of um, Little Mermaid in his oh, yeah. shell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on, I got to find it here. Yep. What number is it? Not, Seven. Not, oh, you can, you can read Roman numerals? Yeah, oh, I took Latin. Latin. I took Latin. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Right. Okay. <laughs> movement the chariot 
The charioteer is traveling warrior of the tarot. He holds a trident to guide him on his journey and two seahorses carry him forward. He needs only one hand in the reins to control their decision. His willpower and determination propel him onward and keep his chariot moving in the right direction. In his seashell chariot, he is protected. The shell also symbolizes his personality or the outer persona he shows to the world. So the meaning is movement. It's time to make some serious progress. Travel is favored now as moves are connected with work. This card is also a general sign that every aspect of your life will surge forward. However, balance is necessary and you need to treat people around you with care as this card of energy, this is a card of energy rather than sensitivity. The card reveals that good timing and being aware of your ego will be essential if you're to keep your show on the road. An additional meaning of this card is acquiring a new car or another vehicle. Advice. It's <laughs> I can't. It's time actively to move forward with your plans. Keep that ego in check when you need to and enjoy this time of power and motivation. Okay, 25k. <laughs> 25, okay, okay 25k. You and Scott. Wasn't it you and Scott during the last episode that were like, "Oh, we gotta get your ego in the door." <laughs> and did you not pick that got one? It. Absolutely, I did. Okay, 25. All right, keep my okay, ego in check. Fine. What, do you got, what do you got now? 75? Yeah, the, the, reality is, <laughs> the reality is I'm scared to death over here. The ego is just fake. The ego is like, oh God, do we have the appropriate SEO? Did I put the computes <laughs> into where they need to go yeah, think so about that it. we can use this to our best? You're light years ahead of where you were even last year. I know. Last year, you would have taken videos 16, 17 times and then thrown oh. them all away. How many videos did we not post? Because right. I couldn't get over whatever it was. Well, now look I, at you. I, I now you're it. like, I got something to say. It's because Listen to you motherfuckers. I I'm just going to sit here in my car and tell you what I'm thinking. <laughs> in fact, we'll be on the phone. You're like, wait, I got to record that. <laughs> we have cut, we have, we have I turned a corner. I know. So Steve, my friend Steve's always like, are the acoustics better in the car? <laughs> <laughs> like you asshole, whatever. Well, picking your hair chins is. <laughs> I know the light's better All in right. there. I mean, the acoustics <laughs> probably are better. Yeah. Isn't that funny? And I have an affirmation card here. It's called, I am secure. <laughs> I know that my finances will be taken care of even when I don't see how. Okay. That one's for you. That's actually. <laughs> that one's not for me. That one's for you. That's me. That one's for so you. Thank God you're getting those 75 views. I know, views. I know, right? Thank God you have our life and plan That's because right. that might not, I'm not doing, That's I don't know right. how to do it. That's right. One of us has to be in charge. In fact, the, I'm just saying uh, your kid up for um, travel basketball. I'm going to take good. them all the places. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. As we've decided in this game plan, I'm the one who manages everything and you're just like the nanny. That's fine. Assistant. That's fine. Right. Who That's just fine. does all the stuff. Right. Hilarious. So I've had a video for us for a very long time that I've been very excited to show. Okay. And have I seen it? Got no, I don't oh. I don't think so. Great. So commencement was just recently upon us, mm -hmm. right? Two higher ed student affairs professionals who former student affairs higher ed professionals who spent many a time in commencement. I've always dreamed of giving some type of commencement speech. You will. Yeah, I'm hoping. That's I mean, a dream of mine. 75K reels. Yeah, right. right. Definitely Hi being there. hired. Hi, it's nice to see everyone here today. Have you followed me on Instagrams? You should. In fact, if you send me a but Facebook message. But I'm keeping message, my ego in check. If you send me a Facebook <laughs> request, I will politely say to you, I'm not accepting personal friends. Please follow me on the you Instagrams. You will get a real life response from me if you friend me on Facebook. That response will be, I'm not interested, but it will still be me. Thank you for coming today. Now, about commencement. But have, but so here's what happened. Because I'm in charge of the SEO and because I've been working very hard to make sure that our More Love Podcast Facebook page is connected to the More Love Podcast Facebook group is connected to... Wait, we have a third page now? The YouTubes. Yes, we have an extra business page because you have to have a business page in order to run ads. Do I have to post on that too? No. Okay, thank God. No. Okay. Okay. But Scott, when he posts the videos, the videos end up going on there. It's it's a whole thing, uh, right? Yeah. So let's just say that when I went in there mm -hmm. and was starting to figure out what was in the group versus what was in our Facebook page, I realized that Scott had already created us a Facebook page oh. forever ago oh. because that's where he has to post the videos, oh. right? But again, because I'm a creature of I have to do it and see it in order to understand it, mm -hmm. I didn't recognize that. So, Scott, either. props to you, one, for creating the page. I didn't have to change the page name. It was fine. Great. 
I didn't have to change that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. For yourself. That Rebecca mm-hmm. and Aaron are the the like owners or the oh. people. So, so he 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 just really did a great job. Nailed with it. Now, Nail- Scott, nailing it. Now, would I have been like, Scott, what is this? This is what is this? Right. We did what? <laughs> right. Had I it know. not been okay? Yeah, I would have, but I didn't need to because Scott did such a great job. Perfect. So then I essentially took over that page okay. because again, I had no clue that this is something that we needed. Okay. But when I did, mm-hmm. I found a whole bunch of messages and I found a whole bunch of like Stop it. Just things from a bunch of people that were like, oh my gosh, I saw this and I thought of Rebecca or oh my gosh, this makes me think of you. And the game was this whole experience. So I want to be really clear. Same is true about my personal Instagram. If I'm not getting back to you, it's because I have no clue what I'm doing. It is not because I'm being rude. You didn't even know it was there. Rebecca doesn't even know we have a page. So that's why you're not hearing from her. No idea. But I didn't even know it was there. And so when I went in there, someone... I think it was my friend Megan from high school Mm -hmm. had posted this commencement speech and had said, you have to watch this. Like this is, is you and Rebecca. So I watched it. I loved it. I shared it with Scott. Scott's like, I really love it. And I thought, good, let's show this to our listeners. So one, thank you, Megan, for providing this for us. I'm glad I finally saw it probably last year at commencement when she sent it. I have no clue. <laughs> but um, it's finally making its way. All right, we're going to do it. So The best way to spot an idiot, look for the person who is cruel. Let me explain. When we see someone who doesn't look like us or sound like us or act like us or love like us or live like us, The first thought that crosses almost everyone's brain is rooted in either fear or judgment or both. That's evolution. We survived as a species by being suspicious of things that we aren't familiar with. In order to be kind, we have to shut down that animal instinct and force our brain to travel a different pathway. Empathy and compassion are evolved states of being. They require the mental capacity to step past our most primal urges. This may be a surprising assessment because somewhere along the way in the last few years, our society has come to believe that weaponized cruelty is part of some well thought out master plan. Cruelty is seen by some as an adroit cudgel to gain power. Empathy and kindness are considered weak. Many important people look at the vulnerable only as rungs on a ladder to the top. I'm here to tell you that when someone's path through this world is marked with acts of cruelty, they have failed the first test of an advanced society. Mm. Wow. Ding, 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 ding. in my eyes and my whole body is It's so true. I've never thought of it in that context. Which part? The the fact, animal instinct? Yes. Yes. And how we as human beings, that's how we're formed. Is mm-hmm. that the word? Like that's, that's, and evolving is these advanced skills, which is why a lot of people don't have them. Yes. They're learned. They're accepted. They're embraced. They're practiced. Mm-hmm. The easiest thing to do is be a judger and be cruel. That's not that's right. not intentional. Right. I'm not intentionally gonna be like, fucking hate your blonde hair. Right. I'm choosing to hate your blonde hair. What the fuck is that? what? <laughs> right. I don't think that I mean Right. Wow. I just love how he he talks about empathy and vulnerability as advanced states of being Mm -hmm. because it's harder Mm -hmm. to be empathic and vulnerable and to see people and the world not from a primal state Mm -hmm. of this is how we're different this is what i don't like about you this is what is unique about you compared to me Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. that 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 is actually a normal form yeah. of response well and survival think at your at your core core right you as a human we needed to survive back in the day everything was a threat mm-hmm. so it's just funny that over time and you know we put all this crap into our bodies physically like 
processed food and all this stuff. And so as as our generations and as we evolved physically, things are happening. But yeah, our brains expand and evolve. And does that get passed down? Mm. Other than by actions, nature versus nurture? I don't know. Mm. Why then, if empathy and vulnerability are higher and more advanced forms of connection that they are not primal Mm -hmm. why are they seen as a weakness that's a good question because if if there was this so there's a way of being that is expected and then if there's a higher level of being that's available it's just difficult for people why isn't that seen as a higher level to achieve because i think the message that especially in america we get is if you stand for everything you stand for nothing okay and so therefore i think people that's maybe too broad but i think sometimes people might think if i if I have empathy or show vulnerability for something that I may not necessarily stand for, I'm not, I'm seen differently and I don't want to be seen that way. Hmm. I don't know that to be true for everybody, Mm -hmm. but God forbid, you know? And I think that's where it gets confusing sometimes when people are like, I don't like, I don't like gay people or the act of being gay, but I love, I love you. That juxtaposition right there. Mm -hmm. Right. It's Mm -hmm. like, how can both be true? Mm -hmm. How can you say that you don't like this? That's the core part of who I am, but you love me. Like that makes no sense. Hmm. You know what I mean? I think so. So I am curious, though, why empathy and vulnerability specifically are seen as weaker or less advanced compared to something to aspire to i don't know and then i wonder if it just takes a specific type of person or portrayal of empathy and vulnerability in order to think differently then the only person that's coming to my mind right now is mr rogers Mm -hmm. i love mr rogers He's my answer to the question, if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? It's Mr. Rogers. Okay. And he was beautifully empathic and vulnerable and caring way above his time. Mm -hmm. And I never got the sense that people saw him as weak or... um, a lesser, you know, like an easy to plow over, Mm -hmm. you know, bullying kind of kind of thing. Right. They they never saw his empathy and vulnerability as as weak. I would agree with that. People have seen it as beautiful. I would agree with that. And so what's the difference between a Mr. Rogers and uh, the kid on the playground who makes sure that some other kid is included? Right. Are they seen as weak or I think amongst their peers, they probably are. Hmm. Right. But like what what are those factors that takes that empathy and vulnerability and turns it into something that is seen as a higher form instead of seen as a weakness? Because it's going against the grain. It's like not most people don't naturally act that way. Mm-hmm. Most people gravitate to the crowd. And then when you, it's like swimming up, who's the fish that goes up the stream? The salmon? Oh, you know, (laughs) going against the current, like going against the masses. I don't, I don't know if I would see, I personally wouldn't see that as a weakness. I would see that as like, holy shit, that's brave. That's strong. That's amazing. That's breaking. That's not giving two shits about what somebody may say about you. That's confidence. But I, I don't know. We joke, though, that you see aspects of my vulnerability as like eye rolls. Oh, my gosh. How come you're doing that? Right. So Mm -hmm. a great example would be when we talked about me responding to the people on Facebook Mm -hmm. who wanted to be friends with me. But my Facebook isn't for that. Mm -hmm. Right. So we joke. Right. Like, oh, my God, just leave them alone. Who cares? Right. Why do we have to do that? 
So that's an aspect of vulnerability and empathy for me, right? I Mm. believe it's kind to respond to someone who's made the effort to say, I want to connect with you. It doesn't need to be like, oh, tell me about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But it can be, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I see you. I appreciate you. Thank you for wanting to be connected with me. Mm -hmm. And here's some ways that you can connect with me. My personal Facebook is just, I keep it a little more tight, right? To people Mm -hmm. that I know specifically, Mm -hmm. you know, or or have met or have close connections with. Mm -hmm. But in that situation, why why is that not seen as a higher level of wow, that is a it's a superpower, right? It's this sort of desire to connect with people in this certain way, like a Mr. Rogers kind of thing. I would imagine he would do something similar. He wouldn't mm-hmm. want someone to be on scene, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that would be an example, because you're not the only person that probably would feel that way, right? Of a way where we don't embrace or see that for what it is. We're like, oh my God, why? Why Why would you do that? It's such a waste of time. Why would we, right? Mm-hmm. But why is that? Like, why, why aren't we looking? It might be seen as a weakness, right? It might be seen as a, you're wasting time on something that doesn't need your time and attention. So why in that situation is it seen more as a weakness than seen more as a... I can only answer for me. For me... My natural tendency is not to want to connect with people. I'm not the person who's like after the speech that that you gave as part of your job, you want to sit there and 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 have the individual conversations with people. I want to get the fuck out. I'm over it. Done. Right? And so I view social media the same way. It's it's not that's not a time to 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 have other people's needs be met. My needs to be my needs need to be met first, which is the boundary of I'm not engaging in there. So I don't I don't view it as a weakness. I actually view it as, wow, that's admirable that you would take the time to individually reply to these randos that you don't know because they were so inspired by something you said. I don't view that as a weakness at all. Hmm. Maybe it just comes from your desire to make sure that everybody feels seen and heard because at the end of the day, if you can repair that hole that everybody has, I think everybody has a a feeling inside of them that at some point in time they weren't seen and it really feels shitty. Mm -hmm. Totally. I don't think you're unique though in having a knee-jerk reaction to hearing that and immediately thinking... Oh my gosh! Why would we do that? Because or, for oh me, gosh. it's an energy suck. That's that's a t- that's a lot of energy. But therein lies a really important distinction. Something can be empathic and vulnerable and beautiful, even and you can appreciate it for what it is, even if you yourself wouldn't do it. Oh yeah, that's what I don't think people do well. Mm, that, good point. That I think people come off as incredibly judgmental. Good point. So then the person who is doing, like, here's how it would sound differently. Mm-hmm. If you were like, wow, well, I'm not surprised knowing who you are, mm-hmm. that you would spend all of the time doing that. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. I wish that that level of vulnerability and empathy existed in me. And in many ways it mm-hmm. does. It's just not in that way. Mm-hmm. Now that's and, how I would res- respond to somebody that's not you. I respond to you the way I do because you and I have the, a foundation of, oh, here she goes again. But <laughs> if it was if it was another person who said that, that's ex- I would have been like, wow. That's but inside you'd be judging that person because only you'd because still, it wouldn't be me. Right. You'd still be thinking to your you'd you'd say that, but yes. you'd still be thinking, 100%. why are we doing that? That's so stupid. We don't 100%. need to spend our time doing that. Absolutely. That's part that is part of the problem <laughs> of why we bit. are where we are. Because empathy doesn't have an opportunity to continue to grow and be positively reinforced when people who do empathic acts mm-hmm. get downed or judged or like hit real hard with the that's so stupid why are we doing that Mm -hmm. right so the response i think that that specific response that we have that internal response is the important factor that differentiates empathy and vulnerability as being something that can be seen and praised even if we don't feel that we want to or care to or want to be in a position to do that 
Yes. Versus giving the impression that that vulnerability or that empathy is a waste of time. Why would we do it? Mm. And that's where I think as a society, we've not done a really great job of differentiating the two. And those people who are huge empaths and are very vulnerable are constantly being negatively reinforced because we're getting messages that that empathy is a waste of time. Mm. That vulnerability, you took way too long doing that. Mm. You didn't set good enough boundaries with that. And look at that. You got taken advantage of. We're not spending time embracing the empathy and vulnerability. We're just spending time on the aftermath because of people's own internal reactions to either I would never do that or I'm really uncomfortable with that or um, I don't understand where someone would take the time to do that. And I think even if it's just a subtle shift, Mm -hmm. right, of acknowledging first and then being like, I really respect that because I would do something very different. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, the opposite is also true. When you take a non-empathic response, my first response to you is not, I see you setting some really clear boundaries around your empathy and vulnerability because it's too much for you when it all comes in, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm like, you bitch. Uh-huh. Why? Well, you're so nasty. Uh-huh. Why would you do that, right? Uh-huh. So part of that, I think, is just normal human behavior. Sure. But I wonder what that would look like if we paused for a minute and just, as a, as a group, spent some time really acknowledging the basis of where that was coming from and appreciated it for what it was, even if it was something that we ourselves wouldn't do. I wonder if that changes, maybe it doesn't change anything, right? But I wonder what that would change. I mean, I think that's a great question. And I think that that, for me, it wouldn't change anything because the change I made was to to appreciate and acknowledge something different than what I feel inside. So that is the change. Mm-hmm. The change right. is, wow, right. I can appreciate that and I can acknowledge it. Am I going to do it? No. Right. Your action wouldn't change, but your acknowledgement did. Correct. And that acknowledgement might be the thing that needs to change. Because if we want empathy and vulnerability to be seen as Mr. Roger Strong, mm-hmm. then we need to be able to first acknowledge, you, acknowledge where empathy and vulnerability exist mm-hmm. and appreciate it in that space. Many people do not acknowledge and appreciate empathy in that space because they're yeah. so quick to judge the shit out of it and mm-hmm. be like, "Ooh, you're leaving yourself susceptible to, right? Mm-hmm. That's reinforcing this pattern of weakness. But that's also attributed, you can attribute that to maybe something that happened way back in the day. And so that's your defense mechanisms. Like it's right. so complex, right? Yeah, it's like, right. there's no clear cut answer. Right. And then I could also, I could also come back and say, well, are you feeling... How do, how do I articulate this? Your need to respond to each individual people on the Facebook who want to be friends with you, is it to make them be seen or is it stroking your ego that's like, ooh, I feel good about this because they reached out to me. Now, I'm not mm. accusing no, you of no, that. No, no, no. I'm just saying that's yeah. another side of the sword. Right. Where a person who can just let it go and disregard it doesn't care about any of that. Right. Maybe. Right. Right. Or or do you not care because you can't trust yourself to not engage in really long conversations with these people who time suck you? Right. Right. So like when you start nitpicking, getting really, really done, and that would take a long time. Right. To like really dissect. That's just one situation. Right. 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 And so and then, of course, you have the the compoundedness of you have terrible boundaries and then you work on it and then you pick and choose where, you you know, Mm -hmm. it's so complex Mm -hmm. that. Even getting it down to just one little simple nuance of a word can change everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. But I I guess I don't see. It was funny because that resonated with me, the the speech. Mm -hmm. But then when you and I start talking about it, I don't see empathy and vulnerability as a weakness. I actually see it as something that I wish I could do and be comfortable with because it is admirable. Yeah. Very much so. It's just not in my comfort zone. Mm Mm-hmm. So to engage in that feels really icky. Yeah. Really icky. I would love to hear some of our listeners' feedback on yeah. that and how they relate to that and which part identifies with them. Mm-hmm. And also because they've gotten to know you over two seasons as well. I'd love to hear specifically when they hear you say that, I love empathy. I care about empathy. I Very want much. empathy to exist and I can't do it because mm-hmm. of all of these different things. No, I can. Things. I internally do it. It's hard for me to 
vocalize it yeah or to engage in a conversation or to um process it maybe because it just doesn't end Mm -hmm. so for me to turn it off real quick right and just disengage and pretend it's not there right is so much easier right it's so much easier for me to get through the day because it's the hamster wheel right it's the (laughs) once you've turned the faucet on (laughs) right now oh i can't i can't let it go i can't let it go i can't let it go like you you can't let go of that woman on the facebook right like i have to turn that off fast because i it's coming all all the angles yep all the angles. I'm the person that if somebody texts me, even if I haven't talked to you in 30 years and you're like, can we talk for a second? That immediately brings me down a rabbit hole. And you're yeah. like, what? I'm right. like, I've already told the story. Right. I've already decided this is what it is. And that is way too much for me. Right. Way too much. I don't know if that's empathy or trauma response. Well, though, that, that's right? what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's it's an interesting, it's an interesting comparison. But that's this whole show. Right. 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 So here I am empathic and, and loving and seeing all of these sides. And you're the one that's like, oh my God, nope, I don't feel any of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, except you do, oh, right? <laughs> right? You do feel all of that. And the problem is you feel all of it too deeply, right? right. Turn and it so, off. Yeah, right. Oh, wait, wait. I don't know if we have it. Oh, it's taken away. We haven't used it in so long. It disappears. Wow. It's like when the emoji that you loved and you don't use it in a long time has gone yeah, out of your... Right. So, yeah, right. You got to find you it. You keep pushing the sushi emoji, sushi emoji over and over and over again because you want to make sure that that <laughs> piece of fish on that rice stays there. It's there now. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh. Turn it off like a light switch. <laughs> there it is. It's true. It's oh, true. Good. Yeah. Really interesting. So thank you, Megan, for sending us that. Yeah, that was awesome. Video clip. Keep sending us stuff, guys. We'll get to it in the next couple of years. Maybe. You know, Maybe. I think. Probably. I we hope know. so. I don't know. <laughs> we'll do our best. Have a good day. Bye. I loved that. Me too. Isn't empathy amazing? Well, we're amazing. I don't know about all that empathy stuff. That's fine. I accept you wherever you are. Oh, God. I love you. I love you too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, The Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time.